Can I get uh, a motion to approve uh, the agenda, please? Sorry, I'm just going to print this on. Councillor Thompson. Marrakis, all those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Um, declarations of pecuniary interest. Seeing none. Receipt of minutes uh, from 4.1 Financial Advisory Committee meeting minutes of March 10th, 2020. Is there a motion? Councillor Thompson, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. So do we have minutes of that June um, 20, whatever it was? Like, wouldn't they be here? The minutes from those meetings would be available on the website. Uh, they are not on this agenda tonight. So they'll be Just on future, future agendas? I think they would have already been on an agenda, wouldn't they? July or August, whatever. So why would March be here? The March minutes so, so relate to the FAC meeting. The June was an audit committee meeting, which is the full members of council. Okay, I'll leave it, I'll leave it, that's fine. Um, any delegations? Seeing none, uh, item 6.1, review of detailed financial budget information re planning and development services. Any presentations or? For this item, the um, detailed information was provided back at our last meeting. So this is the opportunity for members of FAC to ask their questions of Mr. Waters for the uh, detailed analysis that's provided here. Okay, any comments or questions on that? I guess I'll start. I mean, it's not so much with regards to 2019, but I'm curious uh, through you to Mr. Waters, you know, when you compare 2020 with uh, 2019 in terms of, you know, applications, um, what impact has COVID had on that to impact your budget this year? Mr. Waters. Through you, Mr. Chairman. Um, initially, um, when COVID hit in March, uh, everything kind of uh, stood still. But uh, as time has gone on, we have seen uh, a decent amount of activity um, on the application side. Um, I think you'll see a slowing of, of permitting, but on the planning side, in order to receive, in order to be prepared for the next two, two to three years as you move through the planning approvals, I think you'll see a steady, uh, steady growth, but, but not significant growth. You're never going to achieve the levels that you had in the past. Those days are gone, but uh, I think there's uh, there's considerable activity on the um, the ICI side in terms of the employment lands off 404. Um, we have seen some of the subdivisions uh, coming in um, that you draft approved, like Shining Hills, and uh, the one to the south um, that Fernbrook uh, received approval for draft approval for. So I think you're seeing, um, you'll see some, some decent activity happening. Um, I don't expect a significant downturn in planning revenues, but building revenues will be challenging. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Okay, motion to receive. Mr. Mayor, Councillor Thompson, all those in favor? Opposed, that's carried. Um, 6.2, memorandum from project management office, re town project capital project update. Okay. I'll uh, ask Doug to speak to this item. Uh, he normally speaks to this one at the FAC meeting. Sorry. Um, yeah, so this is just our standard uh, update on the major capital projects, Library Square, the Fire Hall. Uh, of course, we are waiting for the start of uh, 
uh, of Library Square, the uh, groundbreaking for that. Uh, we have uh, further to what's in the report. Um, the contract uh, details are all in the hands of the contractor now, and we're just waiting for to arrange the actual signature. We anticipate that this week, and we will have our first uh, meeting with the contractor uh, next week. Right now, it's scheduled for Tuesday. Uh, Fire Hall 4-5, uh, as uh, some of you already know, we got past uh, the soils issue. Well, I should say we got past. We were in a bit of a hold while we analyzed some of the soils issues, but we have a go-forward strategy, and construction is starting now again after a couple of weeks of... Uh, of standstill. So that is uh, further to what is in this report. And then uh, as indicated, I don't remember what detail is in there on the um, on the JOC, but uh, most of that is complete. There's a few small things, the gates and so on that are still uh, that are still not completed. Uh, but the uh, lion's share of that work is done. Thank you. Any comments or questions? Councillor Thompson? Thank you, through you. Doug, you mentioned the fact that, um, you know, we had a soils issue with the fire hall, construction stopped for a bit, and then, you know, we obviously dealt with that at JCC and now moving back on it, but this report does not reflect anything with regards to the soils issue or the delay. It simply just says everything's on schedule and all looks good. Is there no mention of that in this report because of the timing? Uh, that this report was written versus the JCC and we might see something about, about it in the next one. And I'm just thinking about other members of council and keeping them up to date. They don't typically see the JCC minutes that might reflect that, but you know, they may look at the FAC minutes. So I'm just, you know, it, it's a notable piece, you know, John and I both spoke about it because I mean, you know, while we're still on budget, it, it's eaten up 70% of the contingency. Yep. Uh that's a good question. And I don't know if it, that is a function of timing. We get into this, uh, this, this one should have been, uh, should probably at some point reflect a change because normally in the past when we're not in the ground and we're, you know, playing with tenders and so on, we'll adjust the budget and still call it on budget and all the rest. I mean, we are still on budget, but you're right. It, it is, it is worthy of note that, uh, we've eaten up the contingency. I'm going to guess that that decision was made, uh, late in the process and that this was this report was already done but I but I don't know that for sure and, and either way we probably could have had an addendum here tonight recognizing that it's on this agenda so it's probably just an oversight Thank you any other comments uh, just a quick one on library square has the tender been been issued the uh, we have informed a successful bidder we have sent all of the uh, the formal, the documents that would close the tender or formalize the process and have it fully awarded. Uh, for a project this size, that's a, I understand it's quite a laborious thing. You actually, actually have to get together because the corporate seals need to be put on documents and so on. So that has not been done yet. But my uh, understanding is that procurement uh, is working on getting that done prior to a kickoff meeting on Tuesday of next week. Uh, but we do not as of yet have assurance from the contractor that they are fine with the, all the contract uh, documents. Uh, the emails I've seen, which I only get through procurement because we're still technically in a blackout period for this, where our, our, our staff aren't allowed to deal with the contractor directly until the until the uh, deal is signed up. So procurement is handling all this, but the things that have been forwarded to me by procurement seem to indicate that uh, the, the contractor doesn't anticipate any problems uh, getting the contract signed before uh, next Tuesday's meeting. Thank you. Any other comments? All those in favor? Opposed, that's carried. Uh, six, six, three. Council report uh, FIN 20 uh, 2019 year end budget report as of December 31st, 2020. And it's uh, that council report number FIN 20-015 2019 year end budget report as of December 31st be referred back to Council for receipt. Can I get a motion? Mr. Mayor, Councillor Thompson, any comments or questions for staff? Councillor Thompson? Wasn't this one referred to FAC by yourself, John, because you had some further questions you want, or am I misremembering?
because I thought this year end budget report came to us previously at council. We had some questions, there was some further follow up and, and that's why I thought it was here or perhaps Mrs. Wainwright Van Kessel or, or Mr. Natarosny can shed some light on why it's back here. So as per the minutes from the council meeting on um, June 23rd, it was moved by Councillor Gallo for it to be forwarded to uh, FAC. And then it will go back to a future general committee meeting after that. Um, yeah, I probably missed that. So um, I'll, I'll bring it up, I guess, when it comes back to council. Uh, I do have my notes just not in front of me. So I guess we referred back to council. Yeah, I know, I know for myself at the time, you know, I had a bunch of questions, but I did uh, carve out some time with uh, Ms. Wainwright Van Kessel go through some of the things. So, um, you know, at this point, I'm, I'm, I don't really have any, any further questions. So we'll refer back to, to council as originally. Uh, yeah. Okay. All those in favor? That's carried. Uh, Six point four audit committee report FIN twenty zero one six twenty nineteen audit financial statements uh, with audit report uh, received for information. Did I get a motion, Mr. Mayor, Councillor Thompson? Any comments on that item? So perhaps uh, Mrs. Wainwright Van Kessel can again elaborate why it's here because yes, you know, we had the presentation, they came. Um, I don't remember there being too many questions of the auditors themselves when they did their present presentation on the 23rd. Um, and we even, you know, moved the motion for them to continue to be our auditors going forward. So um, what was the intent of bringing it back to FAC? Uh, I was looking up the specific minutes. Uh, I couldn't find them online, so I'm not sure if maybe Linda has them or not. Um, but my understanding was it was just referred back to FAC for information, but it was approved at audit committee. Anyone have any comments or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, that's carried. 5.6. So this is the package for the Aurora Cultural Center. So this is just for information at this time for you to take away and review. Uh, Suzanne will join us at the next FAC meeting for you to be able to ask questions of her. If you do have any questions in the meantime, you can send them to Jason and I, and we're happy to forward them along to Suzanne um, so she can be prepared or potentially respond back before them. But this is for a review at the next meeting. So a motion to defer for discussion at the October 13th uh, FAC. Could I get that motion? Mr. Mayor, Councillor Thompson, comments or questions? All those in favor? That's carried. And last item, um, update 2020 work plan for FAC. Motion to receive the information. Mr. Mayor, Councillor Thompson, any comments or questions? Councillor Thompson. Through you to Ms. Wainwright Van Kessel. Now, Rachel, we missed a few meetings. Have we dropped things off of the work plan or are we just trying to roll them forward? Uh, we have not, we have dropped a few items off the work plan, but it's not necessarily because we've missed meetings. Uh, COVID-19 has had a significant impact on um, just administratively within finance. There's been a lot of additional workloads. There were some things towards the end of the year that we were planning on bringing forward. Uh, one of them is looking at procurement modernization as well and the procurement bylaws that's being pushed into next year. Uh, we are still having work underway working on those items and some of the line by line reviews have gotten delayed as well. So uh, we would have done uh, Mr. Waters back in, I guess, April and continued on, but again, we're delayed on those, but we still have plenty of time before the end of the term to ensure we go through all the department's line by line reviews. Um, 
when are we starting the operational budget discussions for next year? So we have uh, planned at committee next month on October 20th. This one we plan to do the presentation for the kickoff of the 2021 and 2022 operating budget plus the 10 year capital plan. So that is when you'll, you will receive your binders or your online version of the content. And there'll also be a presentation at that point. And then we'll move into budget committee throughout the month of November and meetings there. And then hopefully with a target of approval in December at council. And the reason why I ask this is because I, I thought we don't do departmental reviews while we're in the midst of doing the budget discussions. And so, you know, I saw them in November, December operations and finance. And so I was just wondering whether I was mistaken or these just got pushed forward because of COVID. We did end up rescheduling a number of them because of COVID. So I think that's part of why you're seeing them later in the year. I just, I just don't want to have too much duplication where we're kind of talking about this stuff, but yet we're also in, in budget at the same time. So it's just a comment really. Okay. That's it. Mr. Mayor, any comments? Okay, all those in favor? Opposed, that's carried. Any new business, Mr. Mayor? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just have one, and I'm not sure if I if I need to do it as a motion to give direction to staff. But I I, I would like to see us as finance advisory committee give direction to staff uh, uh, when it comes to our, our our set tax rate for 20. 2021 and what we want staff to achieve. I know we've already pre-approved through our multi-year budget a 3.4 for, for 2021. I'd like to set a direction um, that staff look at, uh, at coming in at 2.9% without, without having any impacts to services or any other of our capital projects that we're looking at moving forward with. And if uh, just at least if we can give that direction from the Finance Advisory Committee, it sets a, a level that staff can look at achieving and bringing to council. And so I think that that 2.9 uh, and some of my conversations is a realistic number, but I'll, I'll let Ms. Rainwright and Kessel maybe add to that. But um, I, I would prefer if, if uh, Finance Advisory Committee would indulge me in, uh, in directing staff to take that approach and come in at that number. I'm okay with that, uh, Councillor Thompson. Yeah, no, I'm fine to second it. Uh, happy to hear staff's response. Okay. Right, to you, Mr. Mayor, um, we will definitely work towards that. I think 2.9 could be achievable without sacrificing any services or any of the initiatives that we included in last year's. We are well underway with our budget work and we do happen to see some savings um, compared to what we anticipated last year. So that will help us manage 2.9% uh, for 2021. Okay. So it's Mr. Chair. Sorry, if I, if I could, sorry, if I could just add to that, I just want to uh, make it clear that the, uh, we have had some discussions about this and the, and the reason that we're optimistic that this is, is achievable is only because of the funding uh, for COVID. Uh, this would not have been otherwise uh, affordable, but the, the provincial government uh, funding to the lower tier for, uh, to offset the expenses we've received, uh, incurred as a result of COVID, uh, we, we right now predict will will cover us for 20 and, uh, and probably 21. So that's what makes this uh, something that we can uh, consider and perhaps bring some options forward to council. It's, I don't wanna present it as a fed de compli, which it's still uh, partially into this year and, uh, and we'll still be crystal balling a little bit next year in terms of that funding and making sure that we have enough left over for that so that we don't just push a problem down the, to 2021 or it's rather to 2022. But, um, but and that's, uh, that's why we're, uh, we think that uh, this might be doable. Yeah, our plan is to take the safe restart funding and the amount that we do not require this year used towards some of the pressures that we see for next year. I can tell you without that smart restart funding, um, it's a pressure of probably about one and a half percent on the tax levy. So it's, it's significant. So we're looking at taking what we don't need this year um, after any other operational uh, savings and putting that into our tax stabilization reserve and then drawing on it next year to deal with some of those pressures that we we're expecting for next year as we continue on with COVID. Just, just on that, if I may, um, so what happens in 2022 when, when we won't have that additional funding? Does that mean that, you know, how, how does the tax rate 
balance this, itself out because we won't have that additional funding. I mean, it's not, you're not saying that we're going to necessarily be doing cuts. You're saying we have this additional funding stream. So, so the, the, oh, sorry, go ahead. So what we're assuming right now is that the COVID-19 pandemic continues in on to next year, but we have not assumed that it will be continuing on into 2022 at this point. It's still very fluid. We don't know exactly how long this is going to be. Like you, you listen to the news and you hear some people saying that there could be a vaccine mid next year, but then it could take up until 2024 to get everybody vaccinated. So there's still a lot of unknowns out there. Um, we will need support from the provincial government again if this continues on as well as every other municipality would as well. But let's assume we don't get any. Does that, what happens in 2022 in terms of um, recovering that because we, let's say we don't get that additional funding uh, yet. In sure. So, sure, I'll take a stab at that. I mean, if, if this is uh, going on the, to the same degree that it is now in 2022, I think all municipalities will be taking a hard look at services and what things are sustainable in the models uh, that uh, that can exist in a in a COVID environment. The the support funding that the province is given now is is specifically to allow municipalities to not have to scale back and not have to change things. Uh, so to reflect, for example, the much lower usage that can be achieved in a rink or in a pool or, or in a fitness facility. Um, if this is going to be, you know, a four or five year scenario, then I think all municipalities are going to have to be taking a hard look at, at what services are reasonable to provide in this environment. Um, because, um, and that could be getting out of other services to support these ones, but I, 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 my guess is that that it would not be sustainable to to just simply rely on the province to fund you know 2022 and 2023 and 2024 and allow municipalities to run arenas at, at one third their capacity and no spectators and, and those kinds of rules. So it really is a big crystal ball exercise, but I would think that we're in for more radical change, sort of wholesale radical change in municipal service delivery if if this is going to be a 2022 2023. Um, uh, challenge. So I assume, just before I go to you, Councillor Thompson, just, I assume that you know we'll have these discussions and, and flush out all of these these ideas through the budget process. This is, I guess, a direction from FAC uh, to try to achieve. But we'll have these discussions at the council table as well. Yeah, throughout the budget process, um, we're going to have the discussion, particularly about how we're what we're assuming in the budget right now for COVID-19 and how that's expected to impact the town's budget based on what we know now. Obviously things could change, but each year we do have to reaffirm the budget. So if there are substantial changes that we need to make for 2022, then we will be doing that next year in the fall as well, as we'll be relooking at the budget and thinking about, okay, if this is something longer term or has this come to more of a close, how do we deal with it at that point in time? Councillor Thompson. Thank you. Uh, along John's line of question, and I think where John is coming from and, and my thoughts are the same is that, you know, if we're using this funding to cover a revenue shortfall to meet our expenditures, then that's fine because then when COVID's gone away, revenues will come back up and we don't have a future tax pressure as a result of using this fund. But if we're using this fund to cover our shortfall in our expenditures because they're rising, well then when we run out of COVID money or we don't keep getting it, then all of a sudden we'll have a shortfall, which becomes a tax pressure. And then how will we deal with that? And I, that was my sense of what John was getting at is that, you know, are we using this money just to, as a bridge, in which case when it's gone, you know, we're going to be left with a hole in the budget and how do we make that, you know, whole, or are we just using this to cover revenue shortfall? And that's how we're getting at the 2.9%. And I, I think that's where probably all the council's head will be at is that, you know, hey, listen, it's, it's great we have COVID, but are we just passing this problem down the line so that we have something that can be concerned about in 2022 or 2023 or whenever, or is this really dealing with revenue shortfall issues? So, so if I might, Mr. Chair, the, the funding is allowed to be used for revenue, uh, to offset revenue that we're not achieving, as well as expenses that we're incurring directly related to COVID. So uh, the, the, the bulk of the expense side is in the uh, reopening uh, modifications to buildings, modifications to programs, buying masks, all those kinds of things. So a lot of that will be heavier this year than 2022 because all of those partitions and things and physical changes will have been completed in 2021. So more of the subsidy in 2022 will be to offset revenue decreases. Um, 
then when it comes to expenses, I mean, we have some control about some the reason that uh, we have to offset the revenue is because we're continuing to offer the full suite of programs to the best we can in a, in a situation we otherwise wouldn't offer. So the bulk of our uh, communities, uh, recreation programs, for example, we try to offer them on a break even and when they don't all break even if we get close, we're fine. And some of them we make a little money on. So this money is offsetting the revenue that we're not getting to bring us to that break even in those programs. And so what we would have to do is take a hard look. I know I'm giving a long answer to a short question, but it's really looking at that revenue we can reasonably expect to achieve given the constraints of COVID and how much expense are we willing to put towards that. So it may be that we have to look and look at a model that says, you know, unless they're, you know, coming closer to a break even than they were before, we'll have to get rid of some of those programs or something like that. I don't, I don't know what that is. I think this is something that, again, the municipal sector is, is wrestling with, not just uh, the town of Aurora. So it's a combination of both in the, at the end of the day, if it goes beyond uh, 2021. Yeah, but I think, you know, I mean, I think all the council would be supportive of lowering the tax rate to 2.9% or, or by that half a percent. As long as it doesn't mean you're just passing it to, you know, future years and all of a sudden we're living in 3.9 or whatever in 23 or 22 or whatever as a result of it. That, I think that's what, where John and I are both coming from is that, you know, yeah, absolutely. Let's try and hit 2.9, but not if it just means we're just, you know, pushing some of that stuff forward and it'll be future tax pressures and we'll see much higher rates down the road. So I, I guess if I, uh, the way that council might satisfy themselves that that's not what we're doing would be to look at how we achieve the 2.9 yep. if we can bring that scenario to council. And if that 2.9 is realized, you know, not on the backs of COVID funding or by, you know, taking advantage of something that's happening as a result of COVID, then we should be fine. In other words, if there's other uh, uh, expenses that are not coming in as high as we thought that are, you know, we can't attribute to the COVID situation. Then I, then I think council can be reasonably assured that, that the 2.9 is doable without, you know, basically just uh, subsidizing a problem and moving it to the future. That yeah. future problem may exist either way, but I, you're right. I, I get what you're saying. And if I think we'll make sure that we demonstrate if we do have models that could produce a 2.9 rather than a 3.4, we'll show clearly that those aren't, you know, by, by leveraging COVID funding, which is only going to come back to bite us because we're going to need it in, in 2022. We may need some COVID funding anyway in 2022, or we may need, 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 we may need to make some hard decisions based on COVID, but, uh, but yeah, we shouldn't make decisions on the 2021 budget that is just, a, is just going to come back to bite us. And when we present the budget next month, one of the things I want to make sure that we're clear on is any of those COVID related expenses are temporary ones in nature. They're not ongoing um, revenue losses or expenditure increases. And those will be offset by the safe restart funding that we'll be putting inside into the um, tax stabilization reserve and possibly by any one-time savings. So we may have some one-time savings that are only for a period of a year. Um, for example, our HRIS project right now is delayed. So we're not gonna be paying our license fees but they are going to come back in 2022. So that one-time savings is something that's good to use for these COVID pressures, but it's not something that I would take out of the budget wholesale because then we're still gonna have that pressure in future years. So we're trying to manage it based on um, only offsetting these one-time costs with that one-time savings or funding. Great. Okay, any other new business? Uh, just one question along those lines, if I may, John is that uh, through you to Mrs. Wainwright Van Kessel, with regards to our projected growth numbers, do we have any sense of what the revised numbers might be for budget purposes, what to expect for growth? Well, uh, through you, uh, Mr. Chair, it's, it's interesting you ask that because I'm looking at the assessment growth numbers on a daily basis and they only seem to update about once a week. Last year in our budget for 2021, we included 2.4% increase in assessment growth revenue. Uh, right now for the budget development, we're predicting it's gonna be about 1.9%. And we're trending towards that number. Hopefully we get more, but um, that's what we're trending towards at this point in time. So I assume that's a budget pressure as well. Yes, it is. Great, thanks. Any other new business? I just, uh, I had asked for a, um, a GL for, um, I believe it was well, one of the departments. <clears throat> and I got a summary GL from, from Jason, but I was looking for um, 
you know, I had asked for a full GL, which is not a summary GL. Um, and I'm wondering if, if that's something that, uh, that be, can be passed along. I don't know whether the two of you are interested in that, that level of detail, but, uh, but I am on, um, particularly any departments that are, that are, we're reviewing, um, is that something that can be forwarded on an Excel spreadsheet? Um, the expense side, obviously, I don't need to see the income side. So, do you, Mr. Chair, are you looking for like the detailed listing of all the different types of expenditures? Because that information, we are planning on doing a line by line review of operational services and we'll be receiving a package with explanations at our next FAC meeting. Um, I'm, I'm looking to just see what uh, Jason sent me. Um, you know, it was, it was a high level summary of operations expenses. It was for, um, for operation services, but uh, I want to see the details. Well, a GL, I mean, a typical GL, I'm used accustomed to seeing a, a GL, which uh, describes all of the, the expenses that came out of that, that account. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can, we can forward something to you, but I just want to make sure you're aware that uh, next month's uh, FAC, you will actually get that detail plus the explanations as to some of those variances as well. So you're going to get that as well at that time. We can run the numbers and show you and send them to you as they are right now. Um, yeah, that would be that would be helpful. I, if if you can send all the departments, I would I would wouldn't mind spending some time on that. Any other new business? Seeing none, motion to adjourn. Mr. Thompson, Mr. Mayor, all those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Thanks, John. Thanks, everyone. See you soon.